Uh, hello, I'm Eric. I'm a longtime uh, gRPC maintainer, and this is Yushin, who's experienced in networking and AI. And we'll be talking about gRPC and AI and how those two are related. So we're going to start with how AI is using gRPC. We'll continue to using AI when developing like yourselves. There's going to be a working demo, uh, and then we'll talk about beyond. <clears throat> so AI and LLMs using gRPC, like what is the most interesting aspect of that? It's really going to be talking about AI training. And so whenever you're training your models, you've got it's, we, we all know it's compute intensive, there's some storage intensive, it's power intensive. Basically, is, if there's a resource, you want to get the most out of that resource and stretch it to its limit. And so if there is something not on this list that is not stressed yet, someone wants to know because there's probably some way to make AI training go faster. Um, and that also means networks are in there. Those are a resource that we have, and that's where gRPC is used. Uh, also, for the record, I'm aware there's RDMA and NICs that are on GPUs and such. Those definitely do exist, but not universally. Um, gRPC is used in some other situations. So for starters, why, um, <clears throat> why is AI training so bad? It's basically a pathological use case. If you were going to come up and try to figure out, hey, what is the meanest use case we could do for a network in general, uh, you're going to probably get something very similar to AI training. So you get a fully con uh, connected mesh, because every node does some processing, and then it updates all other nodes, and then it receives updates from all the other nodes. So every node is both sending and receiving from every other node, and you get a nice complete graph, which networks aren't quite as happy about whenever. You are also very bursty. Uh, so there's periods of times you saturate a GPU or a TPU, and then you go do a bunch of network traffic all at once, and then you go back to doing the GPU. And so you get huge spikes if you're just looking at like the red right here, which was trying to demonstrate the network. <clears throat> and not only that, but the system is in lockstep. And so the last node ends up delaying all other nodes. If you have 23 out of uh, 24 nodes <clears throat> complete for a step, all other nodes are going to wait for that last one, and all their nodes are all those nodes have GPUs or TPUs, and they're just sitting there idle while they're waiting. So tail sensitive, tail sensitivity is there. You want them to all complete around the same time. So as people are trying to eke more and more out of their workloads and their, their machines and stuff, there's been hardware advancements. And we're trying to make things more efficient, and all of that's changing right now. So, there's new hardware pushing things to the limit, but some of those things actually do propagate all the way to software. And so, for example, there's been zero copy and things like that that we can reduce the, um, <clears throat> the cost of RPCs. We can re limit how much just needless operations are taking place. But whenever you're ta now talking about hardware, you might talk about DMA alignment. Like That is not anything we've talked about historically whenever we've been looking at gRPC. And is it eight by alignment, or heck, is it page aligned? Um, that's very, very weird, um, it, abnormal new stuff for us. And then there's also a zero software version skew. This is like the one saving grace. So normally, all those things were really, really um, not bad, but, but demanding. And so here you've got the, the nice saving grace. We're still supporting 1.0. GRPC as in uh, not supporting it as an updates, but if you had some really ancient client, it can still talk to a new server. Um, in this case, the, the software isn't lasting that long as far as just sitting there, bit rotting or, or anything like that, before it's updated. It's very, very rapid. Everyone's pushing new versions. And so there's either zero or very little version skew. And that means that stability of the protocol actually doesn't matter very much, where classically that's something very important to gRPC. So this is the environment gRPC is being used and being optimized with most of you, uh, without you, most of you doing anything. So how does this impact you? How, why is this interesting? So there's a couple different optimizations that have been happening in gRPC over the past couple years. And some of those are just general purpose optimizations. So um, for example, if there's an optimization to gRPC that reduces the CPU usage of metadata uh, processing, everyone benefits. 
But some optimizations that are happening for AI workloads, those are only benefit certain applications. Some of those we've recommended for years as ways to tweak or tune uh, gRPC, and AI is just going to use some of those things that y'all are used to. Um, but for example, I mentioned zero copy API. Not a lot of applications use that. It makes sense, a lot of sense for certain applications, and it just doesn't make sense for the others. So any optimizations there would only be seen by the, the, those using those APIs. And then we get some training specific optimizations. So for example, for training and dealing with that DMA issue, we can very well use a different transport completely. Uh, one that we don't need to worry about as much, the, the stability requirements and things like that. And that is less likely to, to be beneficial to the majority of people. People who normally aren't doing DMA and care what DMA is, direct memory access, what's that? Um, and they're not interacting with hardware at that level. So with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and continue and talk about using AI to develop with gRPC. OK, thank you, Eric. Um, now let's switch gear a little bit and talk about how AI can assist gRPC development. I will start the conversation with one question. How many of you have interacted with AI or maybe used a large language model before? Can you raise up your hand? Great, we have almost like 80% of the room. So AI is already touching every aspect in our life. Just think about this. Maybe you wake up this morning and you talk to your smart speaker asking for the weather forecast. Or maybe you have replied a text message using the auto completion on your phone. Or maybe it was your kid's birthday and you want to build up a perfect cake for your kids. So you asked Gemini for a cake recipe. And these are all examples of AIs making our lives easier and efficient. But the impact of AI can go far beyond these everyday activities. And today, we are going to focus on one more specific area where AI and LLM is making a significant impact. That is the world of gRPC development. Before I dive into the details, let's talk about what is Gemini. Gemini is a Google-developed large language model, and it was trained on massive data sets such as text, codes, images, and so much more. And after training, this kind of large language model, especially Gemini, they excel at language comprehension and pattern finding, and which means they can generate text, translate between languages. And this does not only include programming languages, and it also includes like human languages, machine codes. And they can even understand or, and produce code snippets. And how does this relate to the gRPC landscape? So first of all, gRPC is backed up by a thriving open source community. And this community is very rich in well-structured data, such as protobuf definitions, API specifications, and we have countless code examples. And all this data, they can be served as a perfect training ground for the large language model, such as Gemini. So gRPC development aligns well with the strength of LLM, which makes gRPC is a well-suited area to adopt large language model technologies. And here are some specific ways that Gemini may be able to help in your gRPC development. You can see we are covering different stages in the development cycle. And for each of them, Gemini has something to work on. And today, we're going to focus on three user journey, one for each development stage, to prove how Gemini can empower gRPC development. If you have seen the keynote this morning, Please pretend you did not. OK, now I'm going to show you to translate from Swagger file to a gRPC protobuf. So what is OpenAPI? OpenAPI is a common specification for defining your REST services. And we're going to use the Padastore example to start the translation. So here is a Padastore service defining in the Swagger format. And it's a YAML file, and you can see it has several functionality, like list all the paths, create a path, and get path information by ID. And now I'm going to click this. Copy. I just copied the entire YAML file. And let me paste it here. Click the Go button, and we have the equivalent protobuf. And Gemini also gave the protobuf really nice comments and Google API, HTTP annotations. And it's capturing all the functionalities it's very fast, efficient, and ready to use. And now let me switch back to the slide. Once we have the proto, okay, great. Okay, once we have the proto, the next step is probably to ensure it's working as expected. And comprehensive testing is always the key 
but writing test cases, especially before like so many people, could be tedious and time consuming. So this time, I'm gonna ask Gemini to help me. Okay, let me switch to the demo. I'm just double checking the portal buff to make sure we're gonna have the test generated smoothly this time. Okay, I just copied the portal buff. I paste it here and click the go button. There you go. We have the unit test cases for the main service. We have a setup session and we have the test cases covering different scenarios and even some corner cases. And this test is also following the GUnit 4 best practices. And we can also do Python. There you have it. And also go run. So no matter which language you use, Gemini is able to help you. Okay, let me switch back to the slides. Um, Gemini can do even better. Like the previous two journeys show how Gemini can empower the migration process. But if you're in the early stage of designing, you just have an idea, then that's where Gemini truly shines. We can do idea to put buff. So let's say you are a pedestal owner and you have something in your mind, but you're not familiar with the gRPC world and you're not familiar with the protobuf syntax, then what Gemini can help you is it can take in just plain English, describing the service and generate the protobuf for you. And now let me switch to the demo. I'm gonna input some plain English. Help me create a pedestal gRPC service, issue support, list all the paths, create a new path, and get path information by ID. And there we have the beautiful protobuf. So just imagine the time is saved and the amount of sight you know your gRPC service would be perfectly tested. Let's do a quick wrap up. So as our demo illustrated, the potential of integrating Gemini into the gRPC system are truly exciting. From creating a service to migrating a service and to enhancing your existing gRPC service, gRPC has the power to transform every single stage of the development lifecycle. I mean, Gemini has a power to transform the development lifecycle. And it's not just developers who would benefit from the Gemini. From product managers who need faster prototyping to quality assurance engineers who need to increase their like, test coverage, everyone and every role, they can all leverage Gemini's power to bridge the gap and improve collaboration. So as you have seen, Gemini are transforming how we approach gRPC development. But Gemini can do even better. If you're interested in learning more about AI and Gemini at Google Cloud, check out the link. And across Google Cloud, Gemini is being integrated into a range of products and helps enhance your productivity and innovation everywhere. And for those of you who are interested to explore more AI opportunities within the open source world, we have an upcoming event. Mark your calendar for an exciting hackathon in San Francisco on October 19th and 20th. Kevin is leading the charge as one of the organizers, and I will be the first round judge. So join us and scan the QR code and submit your application before September 6th. We we'll hope to see you there. And now we can come to the question and comment session. Please raise up your hands if you have any comment or question. So question maybe for Eric, like can you cite, you, you said that some optimizations were done to gRPC specifically to support uh, AI workloads, like mm -hmm. can, you, can you cite some of them or give us examples? Uh, <clears throat> so multiple of them were definitely around metadata. Um, the, there is a transport that you can see some works that, it's been in the works for uh, in C-Core so a lot of the optimizations for training specifically would be in C. And then um, there's some training related or, or AI related uh, things that might impact Java and Go, um, some, some things like that. 
but uh, like there's chaotic good that you, you can see that there's something going on there about a new transport in C core, um, and that's for weird DMA. Uh, like that's that's one of the, the benefits, but it's not live. Um, that's why I'm not pushing it hard here or anything. Um, some of this was going to be for KubeCon, which would, would have given us a few more months. But um, for general stuff, definitely the the metadata processing. The um, there's also there's been the long-standing C migration for, to Event Engine. Uh, we're also really hoping that that comes to a close because that will open up many. Uh, performance optimizations. Hi, uh, I'm kind of curious about the AI playground in the future. Uh, so I think I might be in the minority here. I actually have a real functional code and have a interface functions and classes and I'm ramping a RPC around it to enable remote access hence RPC, remote procedure call. Um, so I, I find there is no easy tool out there that take the interface or class or even function prototype and uh, generate the RPC or protobuf file for them. Is that actually in the work for them training such that I can actually throw in the prototype to it and have protobuf file? Thank you. I can if you want. I mean, I can, I can comment on it. This was not like fully covered in our demo, but this is a great feedback. We can add it later. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay, so people aren't doing much with AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, we'll be around. Uh, you can contact me um, and, and on GitHub. You'll see me around, and I can get you in contact with Yushin. If you have any more questions, excellent. Oh. How do we access that? Access what? Yeah, that's a that's a compliment. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do we access that AI playground? Uh, is there a preview for us to use it? So, so that's something that you'll you'll probably see coming and be available later next year. Excellent. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you.